I just maybe uh, okay, you. Okay, I mean, thought we have sound now. We do. Oh, oh we, we do. do. Have sound? Oh, okay. Well, I'll now just, we I'll just have put this away sound. then. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, you know what? You know, speaking of sound <laughs> and uh, how sound can play tricks on you, um, uh, uh, uh. I don't know. Should uh, we should we're gonna move on? I feel like to this. Oh, we, we you want to talk about? I know what you want to talk about. This is probably the most pressing debate, the most important um, conversation being had on the internet as we speak. Oh God. Um, the most important piece of news that happened over the course of this week. Do you hear Yanni? Or, or Laurel. Laurel. Um, and actually, you know what's funny is I feel like this meme came and bit itself in the ass super quickly. Super fast. Now people don't want to talk about Yanni or Laurel anymore. No. People just don't care. They're super over it. It was hot for like a few hours. Yeah. Like the life cycle of it. That's exactly <laughs> right. what I wanted to say. Yeah. The life cycle of Laurel Yanni was literally measured in tens of minutes. <laughs> and then it completely cannibalized itself. But yes, again. But, but that being said, did you hear Yanni or Laurel? So I, I heard Laurel. Um, and it, it's obvious that the intended recording was Laurel. Now, I'm you... going to trust you because you're my go-to audio friend. <laughs> However, the first time that I heard it on the radio driving yeah. home, it was definitely Yanni. And then when I went home and listened to it on my phone, it was definitely, definitely Laurel. Laurel. So what we're obviously running into is a low fidelity, poorly recorded piece of audio being yeah. played out on a variety of different <laughs> phone, laptop, desktop, TV speakers. So I completely understand. And I can force myself to hear how someone would hear Yanni. See, and I, so. I could only hear one or the other. No, at no, no point no did I have a mix. So I felt bad for my wife because she was, <laughs> she was when it came to the dress, yeah. she saw white and gold. So I'm sorry, Marie, but that was objectively wrong. I saw um, blue and black. Blue and black. But I got into only... heated debates with friends of mine. And, and they were yes. all wrong. Um, <laughs> but, but the thing about... Uh, Yanni and Laurel is, again, uh. owing to what kind of hearing you have, I played it for my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, like, I just like, so what do you hear the man and, say? And for people who don't know, Lex is now... Uh, about two and a half. Two and a half, okay. And, and so I played it, and she's like, Yanni, Yanni, Yanni. And I'm like, oh no. I'm, I, there you go. We might have to look at adoption. No, but it's a frequency thing. Yeah, no, it's totally a frequency thing. It's totally thing. a yeah. frequency thing. But anyway, uh, I think the sound issues have been resolved and we can get on with the show. We can yes? stop vamping. Okay, <laughs> newegg.com slash newegg now. Thank you so much for joining us this week as we had a little shaky start there. Mm -hmm. Coming at you live from New Egg Studios, sunny Southern California. <laughs> um, I want to kick off, let's let's definitely jump into some deals because we've got okay. some stuff that's going to be going fast, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, so again, this is Newegg. Uh, you want to check out, if you're on that newegg.com uh, slash newegg now page, uh, maybe you're looking for a sweet pre-built gaming rig. Okay. And if you are, ABS has something that might be up your alley. It's got a core, uh, an Intel Core i7-7700 CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, plenty of storage, and a GTX 1060 GPU discounted right now for $100 off. That's pretty nice. And pre-built, I mean, is perfectly fine. But for those of you who want to put together your own rigs, now is the great time to do that. Uh, we have that. just about everything that you need to put together a powerful system on sale right now. Uh, so we let's could, start with the case. We could start with the case. Yeah. We should. You should start with the case. You, know, you want to put all the stuff in a box. Uh, so for that case, we've got the Corsair Carbide Spec SPEC in mm -hmm. lovely red and black for ten dollars off. That'll fit just a, that'll fit just about any motherboard CPU you want. Mm -hmm. And to keep that CPU cool, check out the very affordable Corsair Hydro Series H55 CPU cooler. Now even cheaper because it's also ten bucks off. Love it. So, um, um, yep, you're gonna need a power supply. You're gonna need a power supply to get your build up and running. Seasonic makes some of the best. We've got the Seasonic Focus Plus 850 watt PSU available again for $10 off. And if you're looking for storage, we've got plenty of options there as well. If you want a notebook hard drive, check out the two and a half inch Toshiba L200. If you're looking for an SSD, you'll want to take a look at the one terabyte mm. Mushkin Enhanced Triactor for $85 off. And if you're looking for a high capacity SATA SSD, then this is the deal for you. Uh, if you're looking for 3D NAND M.2 SSD, check out the 250 gigabyte WD Blue, which we have discounted on that New Egg Now page as well. And we also have a great deal on a fancy new curved FreeSync 2 display. Ooh. Now, I tried to in rehearsal to say this several times and didn't make you it. You can good. do it. Okay, here we go. This is the Samsung C32 HG70. It's a 2560 by 1440 monitor. 
great resolution there, yeah. has a one millisecond response time and a 144 hertz refresh rate. You can get it on newegg.com slash newegg now for $50 off right now. Proud of me. You got I it. said all the words. That was perfect. Um, and then the last deal to kick <laughs> off the show that I want to mention is a really exciting one. We have a high-end MSI GTX 1070 Ti for $60 nice. off. Now, GPU prices are finally getting back to sane levels, and this 1070 Ti is a killer deal at this price. So make sure you head over to the New Egg Now page to see all of the deals uh, and tons more that we didn't get a chance to talk about. And now we're going to jump into the show, which if you missed uh, the audio in the beginning of the show, we were talking about teasing some of the things to come, and we're going to be talking about some of your builds and your yes. questions because the show's live, so make sure that you send those in using the hashtag New Egg Now or as a comment on YouTube or Facebook. We're going to dedicate a large portion of the end of today's show to interacting with you and showing off your builds. But now, let's go ahead and talk about Intel's Hades Canyon Nook. Beautiful. So, if you're looking for a smaller PC that can still do some serious gaming, I, you know, you might want to think about Intel's Hades Canyon Nook. It's a tiny little gaming machine that's capable of some pretty amazing things. It's actually what I'm running my part of the show on today, and it, it was in no way, shape, or form responsible for our audio glitches. <laughs> that is true. Or goofs. This this thing's been running rock solid. It has. Um, and we actually had an episode on this a few months ago yeah. where we focused, uh, like, everything in the episode on what this little guy right here can do. Yeah. And you can get a nice bunch of bonuses if you pick one up today, only as a part of Newegg Now. So, uh, we'll, we'll get to the deals in just a second, but uh, I think we should start by reminding everyone what's so special about this little black box. Sure. And, and I think what you would key in on first is that it's got a skull on it that lights up. So that's, that's cool reason number one. It is a mighty and, fine skull. <laughs> it is a mighty fine skull. <laughs> uh, but probably Sorry. more important to people is how powerful it is. <laughs> Not only does it have an 8th gen i7-8809, who can't talk today, 8809G CPU, it also has a pretty exciting graphics solution, which is the result of a partnership between Intel and AMD. It's like when Sonic came to Smash Bros. Very exciting that Team Blue and Team Red are working together. Yeah, definitely some really, and when we had that conversation in that interview, the, one of those bullet points just, you know, that's kind of a dream team combo. Yeah, I remember when that announcement initially dropped and everyone was like, oh. Huh? Um, that team up uses the power of Intel's EMIB, Embedded Multi-Die Interconnect Bridge, PCB design, which allows for a gaming grade graphics package to share the same silicon as top end as a top end consumer PC. Um, so, or as a, I'm sorry, as a top end consumer CPU, this technology means a power to physical size ratio that really hasn't been possible in a consumer oriented computer before. Basically, it's a hybrid Intel CPU and AMD GPU, and it means more power in a smaller package. And that's what this Nook is really all about at the end of the day. Yeah. So, if you want to pick up the Intel Nook 8 i7 HVK, <laughs> which comes loaded with that i7-8809G CPU. I feel like we're being punked today. I know. Continue. Like so, so, so many words today. Um, <laughs> it's, and, and the equivalent, it's an integrated Radeon RX Vega M mm -hmm. GPU. Now would be the time. If you pick it up today, you can get a $50 Newegg gift card for use at a later date, along with a $50 Steam gift card, Ooh. so you can start gaming right away. Yep. And you'll also get a copy of Dirt 4, Total War Warhammer 2 and PC Mover Pro. So you can also move your files over from your old PC to this new tiny little pint-sized powerhouse. It's a lot of gear that will allow you to get your Nook up and running with style. Yeah, you know, we had John Dethridge from Intel in a few weeks ago, and he shared a ton of tech knowledge with us about the Hades Canyon Nook. In case you did not see that episode, and if you want to, it lives on YouTube. You can just search for New Egg Now, episode 19, The State of VR. Mm -hmm. But since you're already here, and because we have such a special deal on the Hades Canyon Nook today, mm -hmm. I think we, uh, the New Egg Ninjas helped us out with a master cut, some highlights from that interview, and we can throw to that and uh, get us back on script so we know what we're talking about for the rest of the episode. So check out this video highlight, and uh, we'll be back to talk a little bit more about Intel, Nook, VR, and all the goodies.
gaming is a great place to promote. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great market. It's a growing market. It, it's a lot of hype. And, and, and we absolutely believe this is a great machine for, for VR, uh, VR gaming and, and AAA games, right? Um, but we also believe that VR expands beyond just gaming, right? Okay. So um, it's all about the content with VR. We get it. It's going to take a little while to get the developers going on it. Machines like this will help developers um, create a lot of great content. Mm -hmm. But there, we see a lot of great commercial VR usages in the future. You mentioned that the Hades Canyon Nook uh, supports Thunderbolt 3, yeah. which unlocks a lot of interesting potential. Um, the New Egg Ninjas actually put oh, this yeah, relatively this new connection to the test. And the results were pretty mind-boggling. Uh, we should be able to take a look at that right now live in the it. studio. Do we still have it set up? Yep, yeah, right there. OK, that is nine monitors all hooked up to one system. The wow. Newegg team was able to do this by using an external GPU mm -hmm. via Thunderbolt 3 and every port, every on, port the on the Hades Canyon, Canyon. nook. Uh, this might not be the most practical thing ever. It's definitely but not. But it's pretty cool. It's super cool. Um, so John. <laughs> What are some more real world scenario real world scenarios for which someone might use Thunderbolt 3? Yeah, so first of all I'd like to say we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. <laughs> so because one just wasn't quite enough for this beast, right? <laughs> And so we think a, a great setup for a gamer would be to be running your Thunderbolt um, monitor yeah. with one of the ports. And then you got tons of storage. You got the need for all your games and everything. So you've got a big uh, storage uh, device with your terabytes of uh, you know, hard drive mm -hmm. um, external. But with that Thunderbolt port at 40 gigs you know, per second, you're able to run it off of there as if it were, you know, on board, on board storage for your product, right? Yep. And so we think that's a, a great setup for gamers. Um, that for, for creators, though, we also think that could be a, a great setup as well where they need the NAS, right? They need, exactly. uh, you know, terabytes of storage. Mm -hmm. um, and they want the best experience on their monitor. There are more and more Thunderbolt 3 monitors that are available today. I think these, these types of computers, and, and John, I, from Intel's perspective, the more lifestyle integrated a, a kitchen computer, a living room computer, mm -hmm. I think we've seen the viability of having a computer under your TV because of game consoles, yep. but they're very limited focus, very limited purpose, and expanding on that discussion, is, is this another step towards Intel's uh, complete domination of my media and uh, lifestyle <laughs> entertainment? <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was a loaded question. Yeah, I, uh, um, I think it's a fine solution. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Complete domination is, uh, you know, <laughs> an interesting way to put it. <laughs> so um, I have a nuck in my living room. Um, it passes what I call the wife acceptance factor. I don't get, you know, um, I don't get told to put it away or tuck it away. Right. It actually looks fairly nice uh, with, with the other, with other type equipment. of consumer, yeah. you know, electronic stuff that I have in my living room as well. So I think this plays well. It's, it's pretty much clutter free. Um, and it's uh, it's not cumbersome or, or ugly to look at, right? Yeah. So so this type of product, and, and I would also say that you know some of the lower performing NUCs are actually fine for most of your media experiences. Mm -hmm. This would just be an amazing media experience. It would let you do your VR and your games in your living room or, or your den as, as you wish as well. The, this the, this product is is basically a convergence of two things that I think are are, are growing: mm -hmm. uh, small form factor and gaming. And so um, the enthusiast market and small form factor kind of coming together. We're going to try this out and see how it works. Now, we're not saying this is your ultimate gaming machine, but gee, this is easy to carry around, right? Yeah. You can put this in your backpack and, and move it from place to place. It's much easier to transport mm -hmm. than a big honking tower, mm -hmm. right? And it gives you a premium VR experience in 1.2 liters. We're going to continue to push the envelope, and we're going to have some cool, new, exciting things uh, that are coming beyond this. So, you know, just kind of put that teaser out there, and Love hopefully it. I can come back and tell you all about it next time. Definitely. All right, folks, uh, being the audio nerd, we do want to apologize. We, yep. we have uh, some routing issues. Uh, one of the main systems that we use to coordinate all of this uh, updated yeah, and so then wiped everything from our so system settings. We know so. we are not currently in stereo, and we apologize for that. But yeah. that interview that you guys just saw was in stereo, and that was uh, great. it was a pretty fun interview, apart from the fact that you could hear it from both sides. Um, and that Because we were talking about that hybrid GPU, CPU, uh, and that, honestly, it seems like the stuff of the future to me. I, it's 
amazing what something that's this small is capable of now. Like that oh, nine yeah. monitor display was insane. Oh yeah, and um and and for all kinds of things. I mean, when we've got multiple Thunderbolt three ports, that that uh, CPU GPU combo, and and actually, and and like Mike popped up on this one too because he was the one that said it. He was one yeah. one of the guys in that video demo. He was so proud. Look at the beast that I've created with the Nook. Um, he he wanted to point out that it's technically ten displays. Because at the same time, mm -hmm. it was also powering an HTC Vive off of the Whoa. front HDMI port. Very nice. Again, I mean, like that that kind of specialized hardware, and yeah. then being able to to do high end computing in something that's way smaller than a console form factor. Right. We, we saw some live uh, some chatter in the live chat on on YouTube talking to, like. I'd, I'd want to strap it to the back of a TV, and I keep thinking like that's the perfect yes. application is Agreed. living room computing. Yeah. So uh, having ten displays hooked up at once is probably not the most practical thing. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome. Maybe not the most practical, <laughs> but for some people, that screen real estate really is important. Uh, day traders, content creators. If you have ten World of Warcraft accounts and you want to raid all by yourself, with yourself, with yourself, by yourself. Sure. With yourself. Um, I'm sure there are people out there who would need 10, 10 outputs like that. And you could do it from a tiny box. I mean, it's very cool to have the capability. That, that's <laughs> really what the Hades Canyon offers. Power, versatility, and choices for gaming, professional applications, and a ton more. So something this small would be great for replacing a console, yeah. for example, while still offering all the power of a PC. And it's also awesome for a living room media box, like we were talking about on last week's show and today by strapping it on the back of your TV and chat. Uh, if you're looking to cut down on wires and move over to a streaming media lifestyle, having one versatile little command center would be fantastic. So cool. Yeah. So both of the nukes we have on sale today are bare bones kits. So that means you need to install RAM and storage. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, if you're concerned about that, uh, especially if you're a beginner, uh, we put together a quick guide to show you how easy it is so uh, let's take a look at that, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and you'll probably be able to hear our story. Here we have our Nook, the Hades Canyon Nook 8i7 HVK. For this installation, we're going to need a PH00 bit, an H2.0 bit, and an appropriate screwdriver. We'll also need the parts we're going to install. In this case, two ballistic SODIM modules and a Western Digital M.2 solid state disk. Our first step is to remove the top plate. To do this, you'll need your hex bit. There are six hex screws holding the top plate on, which we'll need to remove. Once we have the screws out, we can lift the top plate straight off. This exposes the RGB diffuser for the awesome skull logo. We have to get this layer out of the way in order to get into the guts. To do this, we start by removing the cable that connects the diffuser. Be careful. Small ribbon cables like this are extremely delicate. Next up, we have to remove one screw, so let's change over to our Phillips bit. This screw is in the corner of the vent, next to the diffuser. Just make sure you don't accidentally remove the screw that's holding the diffuser on. With that out of the way, we can remove this other piece of chassis, which lifts straight up, exposing the Nook's innards. Be sure to thread the cable we remove through the square hole it comes out of. With the internals exposed, we can see the two SODIM slots, as well as the two M.2 slots. Now actually installing our memory is simple. Take your first module and slot it fully into the bottom SODIM slot. Remember to come in from an angle, then push down until the little side arms click into place. Repeat this process in the top slot if you have a second stick of RAM. Finally, we install our SSD in one of the two M.2 slots. Again, come in from a slight angle and just gently push down. Then use your screwdriver to screw the module into place. And that's it! All of the components you need to get your Hades Canyon kit up and running are now in place. From here, just reassemble the Nook by reversing the steps you've already followed. Just remember to take extra care when reattaching the diffuser cable. Now, just install your operating system of choice and your Intel Hades Canyon Nook is ready to go. Okay. Speaking of RAM, uh, we actually have some that will fit nicely into the Nook. You can pick up 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM right now for $40 off. Not too shabby. Okay, so I'm going to go a little off script here. Do it. Um, this is what I love about different companies getting into this PC building space. Mm -hmm. Tiny, super small form factor PC. Yep. It's tray petite. Um, it's roll lil. Uh, not glued shut. 
Like you can still get inside of it RAM, not soldered into the motherboard Love or logic it. board. Storage, not, Love it. not glued in place. Yes. It, it, now that's obviously not as easy as like if you had a full tower. Sure. Like it, of you, course. you have way more room. Of it, course. It's, it's kind of like working on a car from the 50s versus working on a car today. You know, I, I worked on a Chrysler that I could stand in the engine bay <laughs> with the engine still installed. Okay, so it's not that. It's not that. But you still have the ability to get into the guts of the yes. system. Yes. Yes. It drives me crazy uh, when I encounter a notebook or a phone for that matter that I can't open up myself and make some adjustments, do some modding, fix something should something be broken. Yeah. I know I've ranted about this on this show before, but I enjoy yeah. my uh, hardware manufacturers treating me like I'm an adult. Yes. And I know how to use my products. And, and I don't I don't need to take it to a genius. And even if you're not a <laughs> genius. Sorry. Uh, no, no, I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like we're commiserating on that too. Because like, again, even if you're not an adult, I remember when I was a little kid and modding stuff. And yes. Like, my dad wasn't afraid to take apart the family PC when you still had to solder some components in. And you're like, we shouldn't, we shouldn't always be restricting that. But I digress. That's um, what we love that's about, what we love about. <laughs> the Hades Canyon Nook. Oh, and PC building in general. Yes. Because even if you aren't a huge DIY person, uh, you can manage to futz around, improve things that yeah. this box will grow with you over time. A lot of it's pretty DIY friendly now. Yeah. Or more than it used to be. And, and yeah. built on standards. Yes. Like you, you don't have to worry about a, a Nook compatible equipment because right. it's just built on stuff that you can RAM that we all yep. know and understand M.2 drives. Mm -hmm. So you, you pop in the RAM, you install your hard drive, you, you load up an OS and you have a tiny little gaming powerful PC can run full VR, which is absolutely incredible. Mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of VR, our new egg studios team recently got a chance to go to VR LA. I did too. Um, the big, it's the big Southern California VR industry event. And there was so much cool stuff there, but let's take a quick look at some of the video footage that the new egg ninja team got. And then we'll be right back to talk more about virtual reality. Right? It that was. was so it was cool. totally fun. Um, there were, you know, I human, mean, giant human sized hamster ball peripherals, all sorts of really, really cutting edge VR. I, stuff. I wanted to go, and no one, no one said, hey, Juan, you want to go to VRLA? I would have probably said, yeah. Hey, Juan, you want to go to VRLA next year? Yeah. There we go. We're, it's a date. All right, uh, but there was tons of interesting stuff there, plenty of games, lots of interesting horror experiences, uh, which you would love. I know that's your jam. Uh, there's some articles on GameCrate.com that we'll link to in the YouTube description for the stream if you want to read about the event in more detail. But one of the coolest things that we got to see when we were there was a focus on really pushing VR technology forward in a lot of different ways. Um, and before we go ahead and jump into VR, I want to just remind you guys to share your tech questions and comments on what we've been discussing today. Chime in in the comments section on YouTube and Facebook or tweet us using the hashtag NewEggNow. We have our Newegg Ninjas monitoring the chat so they'll be able to pass over some of the standout questions and comments for us to talk about a little bit later on in the show. So I wanted to talk to you uh, because you got to go. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, because you got to go, it seemed to me like one of the big focuses on the consumer facing side of this VR uh, discussion was tracking and camera tech. Yes. So I, we, we've seen, uh, you know, HTC Vive, I think, is what was that first idea that we had a mm -hmm. room tracking, room scale, so yep. that we could, uh, we could move around or interact with VR in a different way. Yeah. Some of that lacks portability. And how, how did you feel like the discussion on the ground was happening 
did that still feel like it was a barrier that companies were trying to get around that? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of the work? stuff that I saw personally was really focused on getting that standalone wireless headset. Yeah. Um, so we've seen stuff that's powered by a phone, like a Gear VR or you know the Google Cardboard. Yes. Daydream. Um, but and we've seen the super super high end. You know, Vive, Pro, um, Oculus, where you need to be tethered to a pretty beefy rig or a pretty powerful rig, I should say. They don't always have to be beefy, hence the nook. Um, but <laughs> there was this cool mid tier that I saw emerging with announcements like the Oculus Go, for yeah. example, um, or the Lenovo Mirage Solo, which I now have one at home, where they're completely mobile using, um, I, I think they, both of those use a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. So they have their own processing on board. Built so you're not in. tethered to anything. Now, of course, that's not going to be the same exact experience as you're going right. to get on something like a Vive or an Oculus. But it's much closer than, say, the Gear VR. And when you're talking about tracking specifically, the Lenovo Mirage Solo has cameras on the front of it yeah. that do that. So you still have this six degrees of freedom in your movement. You can still track if you're leaning forward or backwards, unlike a Gear VR. Right. Um, or I believe unlike the Oculus Go, although I haven't had a chance to play around with that yet. That one yet but yeah, very, very interesting stuff. And I feel like we are getting closer to that situation where you could perhaps be on an airplane with a headset strapped on, <laughs> which is really the ultimate goal for me, or totally. the real life Ready Player One Oasis, where I can just run around and <laughs> pop it pop on right and on. be there. And you can run down the street while you're having your epic climactic. Well, battle maybe not that stuff. because I'd probably run in. I'd Something, be the idiot right. that trips and falls into a <laughs> fountain, and that video goes viral on the I'm internet. I'm so glad you brought up airplane. That to me is going to be one of those threshold points. You know, like so many planes and especially like lower cost airlines have been yeah. getting rid of the entertainment systems because you've got your phone. Oh, they assume you, you have your own app. device. Yes. Yeah, you'll use that, that company's app. I want to see, you know, like I'm on a flight and I can just go into my own mm -hmm. little media experience and, and yes. be entertained. Yes, another interesting use case for that that I was reading about. A lot of people are getting into, this is going to sound weird at first. If you just follow me, it's, it's, it's going to be weird and then it's going to come back on track. Uh, bedroom VR, again, sounds weird. I'm saying this because mm. how often are you, maybe you have a roommate or a partner that you, you know, that you share a bed with and being able to strap something onto your face to watch Netflix oh, then yeah, yeah. does not bother anyone else in the room. There's no light from your laptop screen or whatever it is. It's a very easy way to consume content without bothering people around you. No, way back in the day, I thought we were going to go there. Mm -hmm. there. We had all of those solutions for like cinema headset. They weren't VR, but it was like you would put on a headset and it felt like you were looking at a TV mm -hmm. or a movie theater screen like way far away from you. I thought that was a really cool thing, but they were ridiculously expensive, like thousand dollar headsets. So I thought like, oh, well, eventually that stuff's gonna come down in price. Mm -hmm. Now it's VR. That'll probably get us there. It's getting us there, but, yeah. You know, so for some of those movement issues, too, um, if we're looking at wireless options, we do have like the ability to take a Vive wireless. Yay! So I mean, like um, one of the ones that we have on, <laughs> on UEG is uh, you can pick up the TP-Cast wireless adapter for the mm -hmm. HTC Vive for $50 off. So this takes a bit of setup. This is early days for cutting those cords. We had a whole episode on cord cutting, uh, which you can catch on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But not being tethered to a wire makes jumping around in VR, I, I, you know, it's, it, it's the peace of mind that you're not, you know, if you're spinning around, if you accidentally unplug your Vive, the force of that movement, you know, you could rip a tower off of your desk if that's where yes. you kept your PC. No, it's it's very, very nice. Um, and HTC also has an official wireless Vive adapter that should be on the market soon. And if you already have the first version of the Vive, you're definitely going to want to check out the official HTC Vive Deluxe Audio Strap, which adds some serious comfort to your headset along with some great built-in headphones. So if you have the more expensive Vive Pro, these options are already included. But if you have the standard Vive, the Deluxe Audio Strap is a super easy way to significantly improve your experience. And uh, then you're also in luck because we have it on sale right now for $20 off. So mm -hmm. make sure you check that out on the Newegg.com slash Newegg now page. And, and of course, there are other VR yeah. options to know about as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing around with, oh, I don't want to drop the Vive. Um, I've been playing around with uh, some Microsoft Mixed Reality headsets yep. uh, from Acer, Asus, Lenovo. Yep. Um, so those have motion tracking built in. Again, like on device, this, this first generation, we've got these different tiers. 
where when you use the Vibe, there's a quality of tracking that mm -hmm. feels just a little bit more cohesive than stepping down a tier. But I've been that. very impressed with the price point that Mixed Reality has come into, yes. offering that built in without having to set up room sensors. Again, mm -hmm. it's like you want to, you, you want that price performance. You want to balance all that out. So you don't have to have those separate external uh, sensors to pull that off. So they're not as powerful as the Vive or Oculus, but they can also run on lower end hardware, often even on integrated graphics from yeah, the chipset. Yeah, which we've mentioned on the show before, that's amazing. And you can still play super hot, so it's, it's good times. <laughs> really, that's all that matters, super it's hot. Like, can I hot. play super hot? Um, <laughs> the best demo to show off VR for someone who hasn't, who hasn't experienced it. We have one of those headsets on sale today, one of the uh, mixed realities. Mm -hmm. This is the Lenovo Explorer VR headset, which you can pick up today for $60 off. Now, one of the most interesting things about VRLA was the sheer volume of different ways that people were using VR. Yeah. Um, when people think of VR, most people think about gaming. And while that's certainly an important part of it, there's plenty more to it than that. Um, so when we talk about in the world of health, training, mm -hmm. training using VR and AR as training for surgeons. Um, or as a type of meditation or PTSD treatment. There's all sorts of experiences. It's very cool. So when you, when you were on the floor yeah. at VRLA, did, did you get to see any of those demos? Because I've seen, like, obviously I've seen videos of, like, surgeon trainer VR type stuff. Um, I didn't see a surgeon trainer at VRLA, but I did at CES this past year. Okay. And I, to be perfectly honest, don't have the stomach for that. Um, so I did not personally experience that <laughs> right. demo, but I watched other people doing it. And I feel like whether it's uh, how to operate heavy machinery, how to uh, perform surgery, any of those training capabilities and applications for VR and AR are miraculous to me. And I think that's the place where we're going to convert most people's mindset around right. VR and AR is something that's for fun or just for just for enthusiasts, just a hobby, to something that we actually need. Once it becomes a need, then I see it. I see it as plowing forward and really making waves. And, and one of the thresholds, and I wanted to ask you about this too, mm -hmm. if you saw any advancement on things like body tracking, because we, we've got some great controller handheld mm -hmm. stuff, and then you look at taking it to the extreme of Ready Player One with immersion body suits and stuff. But I keep thinking about health and fitness, like the idea of a yoga or a Pilates community through VR, but you wouldn't really be able to do that unless it could track you know, like where like you're, full body tracking yeah, because like where the instructor your limbs are. would need to see if Manipulate you had good you. form exactly. and that kind of stuff. Um, I did not see our full haptic suit that, mm. that we all want, but again, the peripherals are very cool. Um, I didn't see the Virtuix Omni there, but that's like a treadmill type of uh, peripheral that you can use with VR. But there was a full human-sized hamster ball that you can run around in. Like, there's a lot of and a lot of haptic gloves. Okay, I've seen demoed. Um, haven't seen the full suit yet. I've seen attempts at a full suit where like you strap on shin pads and a vest and like things that look like bracers and that kind of simulates it so that say in a combat simulation you can get down and roll oh, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. I, we're still getting there. Okay. No, nothing is quite to that level where it's incredibly cohesive yet. But I think we're getting there. Um, but things like when you can't be there in person, say uh, news reports in VR, you feeling yeah. like you're actually at the event, real estate, virtual tours of buildings and homes uh, from wherever you are. I mean, those type of applications, real world applications outside of just entertainment are going to make it happen. I know people were talking about uh, when it comes to police work, getting oh, training cool. in that area, um, ballistic simulations, or if you need, uh, say, like a jury to experience a crime scene <laughs> in VR, you know, that's, like there's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Engineering programs. Like, that's not creepy at all. Is like having different interpretations of VR experiences to serve up to juries. Well, this is what we think. Happens. You know what I mean? Like just the possibilities are endless. Wow. Um, but I, I still think that a lot of people hear VR and think gaming and think entertainment. And when you really look at the widespread application of VR and AR technology, it is, I believe it is our future. You know, when you get the people that are like, uh, oh, VR, that's just another like 3D TVs, it's a gimmick. Um, I don't think that's the case, and that's because of the different applications that it will have in the future. Well, and it'll be interesting to see, especially uh, when I get my invite to VRLA next year, 
uh, where, where we get to see some of those crossover points. Again, like we keep lumping VR and AR because they're so still so fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, again, that consumer push, where are we going to see people really get on board and get excited about this? Yes. And watching them where there's that Venn diagram overlap of where you can have a, a more solitary, immersive experience versus augmenting mm -hmm. the information at your, at your disposal when you're out and about. And that, to me, will be that really exciting synergy point of really bringing computing to our face and to our eyeballs and to our senses in a more organic way. I also want robot eyes. I want robot. I want Terminator vision. Yes, agreed. It's so rad. OK, so there's all kinds of awesome things you can do with VR. <laughs> Uh, but we started this conversation kind of talking about gaming and okay. the Hades Canyon Nook. Yes. And there are some incredible VR games coming out. One of the newest and most exciting and most sweat producing titles uh, for music fans, this especially. This game is so good. It's so good. We're, of course, talking about Beat Saber. Yeah, Beat Saber is incredible. I think universally out of all of my gamer friends, I've just seen everyone tweeting about this game, even people that don't traditionally like music games. So it is a music game, like a rock band or audio surf, if you want to go old school, think frequency or amplitude. Um, but it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little different because I you were you were like to you were drawing those comparisons to things like rock band. And one of the first things I thought of was also Dance Dance Revolution. I love Dance Dance Revolution, um, but you do not. I, I am so terrible at DDR, so I was shocked that I enjoyed this. Not only enjoyed it, but not like really enjoyed got it. into it. Juan is like a prodigy. He, he is. <laughs> it's so, crazy how good so, he was. So at the Beat difference Saber. between those games and, and what you do with, with Beat Saber is how you interact with the music and that you're in this virtual environment. So you're basically holding lightsabers. Yes, you are. Um, hence the title of the game. You're dancing with lightsabers, You're okay? With lightsabers. Very cool. Uh, again, not not just being some candy flipping, you know, like ninja in the middle of some sort of warehouse party. It's you actually have lightsabers. So you use it to slice through these tiles in different directions along with the beat of the music. And while that's a little tricky to describe, and why took me I, a second to figure that out, as we, you'll probably we see. both failed hard on our first run through easy missions. Um, but it doesn't take you long to get a good feel for it. You get a good feel for it, and that's what makes this game, I think, so wildly popular right now, is that you feel like such a badass I know. when you're playing it's this game. So, good. Uh, so instead of just talking about it and building the hype train even more, let's show you guys a video of Juan and I playing Beat Saber. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, man! Exactly 90 seconds in before you drop your first hit. No, wait. Oh, there we go. I get it. I get it. I get it. Dance Dance Revolution for the Nines. <laughs> Got it. There's something really awesome about like how amazing you feel in VR, but what you look like in real life is does does not Damn it. gel. Nice. 
much fun. That game is so much fun. Um, and it's a workout too, which is fantastic. So you'll definitely get a little sweaty, especially in the higher difficulty settings like Juan was I, doing. I was, I was so glad that you went first, because it was like by the end of the second song, I'd soaked an HTC. Oh, bike. really? Uh, so, okay, it was so bad. Sorry, I'm going off script again. Um, uh, so we set it down, we were just kind of chatting in the, the game crate room for yeah. know, like 10 minutes after I'd finished. Yeah. And I'm, I'm dripping. Um, and so Mike is like, hey, you know, I want to I wanna check it out too. And he goes to pick up the headset and you oh, and see that gross. moment of like, oh. Um, <laughs> like, that's why so you great. use those little masks. I, I soaked it. I, I went, you soaked through the mask? Yeah, I went right through the music mask, the, oh, the, the ninja mask. And like, Sir. you gotta like Well, you got your and, cardio for the day. I did, it was great. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the implementation of that is just phenomenal. It is really and, good. And again, I suck at DDR, was really surprised how how empowering lightsaber slashy music game was. Uh, maybe, so. I, I don't, I would say maybe it's just that you prefer to dance with your arms and your feet, but your feet were going the whole time too. There's a very funny Instagram video uh, of Juan's feet <laughs> well, while he was playing that game because they were just going West even though they're not. Yeah, the, the feet don't do anything for you, but it's matter. like, this is how I have to stay on beat. It's yep. like the best parts of like lightsaber combat and, and air drumming. Because I do that okay. a lot. I don't do a lot of air guitar. I do air drumming okay. when I'm around. So, it yeah, works. It's good times. So one thing that will affect your enjoyment of these games, Big like time. Beat Saber yep. or Res, Space Channel 5, is if you like the genre of music. So Res is a super fun game, but if you hate electronica for some reason, which I don't understand why you would I mean, hate's a really strong word. You're going to have a bad time if you don't like the music. Right, and luckily the music in Beat Saber is really fun, um, but it's only going to get better as they add more songs. One of the awesome advantages of PC gaming is mods, and Beat Saber is no different. Uh, people are already adding in their own music, which is awesome. And that means all kinds of new music coming soon, and virtually unlimited songs from all different genres, not to mention different backgrounds and graphics. So the game will constantly be evolving. I mean, it's already really, really fun, yeah, and it's only good. going to get better. So um, what are some songs that you would like to see in there, Juan? So I, I think what works best for me, the, the tracks that I did the best on were mm -hmm. ones that were really drum heavy. Yeah. So I would love to have like audio sampling of, like you could have your Beat Saber Blue Man Group experience or Ooh, Beat Saber Stomp be fun. experience. I'd, I'd even be in there like, strap these things to my feet and we could do some Beat Saber tap dogs from back in the day with some tap dancing action going That's on. That's very here. cool. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I want to import dancing. the entire DDR library. Yeah. From because all of those games were very beat heavy because you needed it for Dance Dance Revolution oh. in much the same way. But a lot of those songs, like if I walk through an arcade and I hear Cutie Chaser, <laughs> I perk right up. So I'd love to get some of that in Beat Saber. That'd be really it's, fun. It's like I've seen it. She actually like meerkats. Mm -hmm. Where is it? <laughs> Uh, so make sure you let us know what songs you'd like to see in Beat Saber, along mm -hmm. with any other questions you might have out there, because we, we spent a lot of time uh, soaking in HTC Vive Pro. Well, me. Sorry, it was pretty gross. Um, so uh, speaking of you guys out there watching the show, again, thank you so much for sticking with us. I know we've had some audio gremlins. Mm -hmm. uh, what a show to have audio problems on is the show we talk about Beat Saber. I know, I right? Like it's just not uh, the, the gods of chaos shining their light down upon our tiny little uh, broadcast. But we do have some builds that we want to show off. So um, yes. I'm actually going to pull them up on my PC here. And Please hopefully do. we don't further break the show, because yes. that would be bad. Because you, you, you guys have sent us some really cool stuff. I know. it's a, We're a chaotic neutral show today, guys. Uh, we always <laughs> love seeing what you guys send in, though. So we do want to take a moment to feature what you guys send in. Make sure you post to Twitter or Facebook with the hashtag Newegg now so that we can be sure to find it. Um, but let's see, one. what so you pulling up So we're starting off with uh, Billy R. Hale. Most of these are coming from Facebook today because we led some really great conversation on Facebook and people just started sending us some crazy yeah. builds. So Billy R. Hale, first of all, just a really clean build in red. So again, uh, this triple fan front case, mm -hmm. really liking the look of that. It's so clean. And the fact that, you know, it's got cool airflow. Billy, great job. Love what you're doing Oh, there. and Billy said, bought all the parts from Newegg. Anyone can do it. Ooh, ooh. Yay! Uh, Thanks, Billy. This is from Luke. We both drooled over this one. Yes. Luke, your lighting game is on point. I love all of the edge lighting around the desk matching up with the PC build in the corner. And look at that desk arm for really the monitor. Nice. Just keeping it really nice and clean. Ooh. Really clean. And uh, Luke also sent that to us on Star Wars Day and say, said, may the fourth, fourth be with, be with my you. setup. 
And, uh, you know, because you don't want to have to face the revenge of the fifth. No, not uh, on your setup. Not on that gear. Ooh. And then this one I thought was really clean, too. This is coming from Wayne. Uh, this is why, that's why I made mine from a piece of plywood and parts from a glass nightstand. I would be so worried about that getting dust particles in it. I, you know, you probably want to run an air filter in mm -hmm. the same room. But again, as a as a proof of concept, that build it's gorgeous. looks super cool. Again, I love it when you see people turn like their PCs into like uh, like tables. Yeah. You know, like all the parts of my PC are part of this coffee table build, yep. which just runs everything in the house. It's just really, well done, really Wayne. cool. So we we had this huge conversation. We put out uh, this from uh, user Chronic Insomniac. They crazy 3D build, and it just totally inspired a bunch of people to also send in their builds also. Love it. So I wanted to show this one off right away. Uh, Lego build! Lego build <laughs> from Rodeo Jones. Um, what is this? He's got 850 Evo SSDs, a water-cooled 6700K, 16 gigs of RAM, and, uh, and he's upgraded from a GTX 980 to a 1080 Ti. Woo! And I just want to point out, like, driving the whole ship is Batman. Because, you know, always be Batman. And no glue. And no glue. And no glue. <laughs> no glue. Again, like plug and play, uh, you, can't, you can't do worse than Lego. Um, from Ian, Ian's rocking. Uh, it's got a turbo button, so that's pretty exciting. Ooh. Good job, Ian. You've got a pretty monster overclock going there, because I think, I think that was probably a pretty low power CPU. But seriously, uh, seriously, this is from Christian. What? Gunner. That is an insane multi-monitor rig. I didn't see that before the show. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I would love to have that kind of desk Network space. admin slash programmer rig. Crazy. 12 square feet of interweb. That's very cool. That's awesome. Um, and then there was one other that I wanted to pull up. Just another clean build in white. So without any mm -hmm. of the ambient lighting or anything on, just putting it together, custom PC in the desk, mid-build. Nice. So David, good job, David Castillo. Um, uh, you know, white being this this new trend in internal PC components. White's the new black. <laughs> uh, NPC building. NPC building. Um, there was one other I wanted to show. Oh, this one right here. Dual monitor, purple build. Com again, coming off of white components. Yep. Again, just looking really clean, guys. I've really been enjoying the work you guys have been submitting. This is by uh, Timothy Johnson. Um, so uh, yeah, I really have to step up my game. Uh, Franken and, build is well. It's inspiring. Really I feel like when people show the their beautiful builds, it inspires all of us to up our game. Not only Juan for your Franken build, <laughs> but for everybody at home. I mean, that that's what I like about sharing these builds on this show is we can take bits and pieces about what we love from other people's builds and incorporate them into our own and all share with each other, which is awesome. Yeah, really, really good times. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me get this cue back here. I still have my my viewer submissions up. Uh, Perfect. So. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about VR so far in the yes. show. And um, you can put together a sweet build yes. uh, if we're talking about VR. You can pick up an Intel Nook if you don't want to have to build a whole system, but you want mm -hmm. something that's going to be VR capable. But for those of you who like to be a little bit more on the go, we've got a pretty sweet collection of VR-ready laptops. So you can show off your Beat Saber skills uh, to your parents. I'm sure they'll be very impressed. It, you know, they'll, um, they'll, they'll clap and say, good job, and pat you on the head, yeah. and that's pretty sweet. I don't get it, but great job. Head to the New Egg Now page where you can find the MSI GV62, which has an 8th gen Intel CPU and a GTX 1060 GPU for $60 off. Yes. Um, there's a ton of deals Fun. for all kinds of things today, guys, so make sure that you check out that New Egg Now page. You can pick up uh, Magnavox MBH539 headphones in black or white. White, RAM from G Skill and Corsair, plenty of PC components and displays, not to mention that MSI GPU and Intel Nooks. Yeah, we've got something for everyone, and those yeah. RAM deals are usually things that sell out on us, so I would definitely recommend checking that out. I know, I'm hoping that's still alive after the show because um, I would like some more I'm RAM. Pricing um, it out. <laughs> all the deals on newegg.com slash newegg now will be live through the end of the day while supplies last. We're signing off, but the deals are still there, so you can go get those deals right now. Please check out that Haiti, Intel Hades Canyon Nook. Seriously, it's so good. It's a beast of a little PC. I really, I, I want people to go and check it out because, again, it's just an exciting step yes, it in, is. in what the future of uh, component and PC building is uh, is looking like. So, 
I want to thank everyone for watching. Again, I want to send that, that, that apology. We were trying to sort out our issues. Obviously, we had some audio gremlins on. But I also want to send a huge thank you out to this New Egg Ninja team for keeping us on. Thank you. Like, actually getting us to some, <laughs> to some functional show so that we could still have this with you guys every week, still making us look good. Uh, this is a great team to work with, so we really appreciate all the effort, all the hard work. Um, and uh, for those of you watching, check back next week when this show's going to be coming at you live in mm -hmm. stereo crystal clear <laughs> audio. Uh, we're going to be talking about the, how the hardware you love actually gets made. It's Some really behind-the-scenes cool. actions. Yeah. Really fun stuff that we want to share with you guys. This has been Newegg Now, and now you know. Bye, guys. Need a Thanks. PC that can fit anywhere and do almost anything? Intel's Hades Canyon Nook has you covered. You can take it to school, or you can put it to work. Use it to power your home theater, or as your gaming weapon of choice. Keep things simple, or take things to the next level. A system that fits in the palm of your hand, powerful enough to run VR. Available now at Newegg.com.